Good morning and welcome back. So this week, you've probably seen it on KSAT.com, the New York Times dropped an article titled 23 of the Best American Dishes of 2023. Throughout, which the publication's team of food writers revealed their picks for the best dishes they ate throughout the year. Among those 23 dishes, and this is why we're talking about it, the brisket taco from Garcia's Mexican Food, located on Fredericksburg, right here in San Antonio. The restaurant says it is blessed. They are thankful for the recognition. We want to congratulate Garcia's and we got the family. The taco! So our producer MJ Inos, that she brought us the tacos. The salsa verde, which I think is, oh, okay. which I think is um, uh, a jalapeno and serrano Ooh, salsa okay. verde. So go okay. for it. I have not really had breakfast yet. Okay, so this, so this is, is perfect. I'm going to be honest. Our director Ralph had got me this taco months before because he's the head of the New York Times because he's the best, and it's amazing. This I mean, is it is so good. It is phenomenal. It's delicious. Oh my gosh, the brisket. Here, here's my. So they're asking me to take like. Well, I. All right, we got. Okay. Mm. I mean, it's amazing. It's amazing. We know this is amazing, and hopefully, it lets people around the world recognize San Antonio's culinary expertise. Yeah, it's not every day at work that I get to eat brisket tacos, Mm -hmm. and not every day that I get to eat the best brisket taco. Taco, this is amazing. It is amazing. I'm if I weren't like trying to avoid Max eating on air. Max is so embarrassed. Mm, I don't like to eat he on air. He hates eating on television. Mm, but and this he, is fantastic. But he did it for us, so thank just, you, Max. Just for you and our <laughs> producer, MJ. All right, we have a lot more to come that is not going to be food-oriented. I'm going to finish this during the break. Same. We will be right back. <laughs> Good morning and welcome back. All right, we're checking in with our photojournalist, Alexis. She is at a live event going on right now with the San Antonio Fire Department. They're having their wrap party, so volunteers, they're still needed. It just started. You're wrapping toys for local children at this event. Get this, been able to deliver toys to thousands of kids across the Alamo City. It goes from 9 until noon. It is at the Fire Training Academy on Callahan Road. A firefighter is asking all volunteers, bring your own wrapping paper, your own tape. And of course, thank you to the volunteers and the firefighters for helping thousands of families across our community during the holiday season. It really is an amazing event each and every year. And it's awesome to see local families step up and help out. It's a lot of Sarah. Texans helping Texans. Yep, spreading that holiday cheer. We love to see it. And I don't know about you, Max, but I'm feeling refreshed after that brisket taco. So if you're just joining us for the morning, (laughs) we just had the brisket taco in, what is it, New York Times Top 23 of 2023 from Garcia's. And it was delicious. It was delicious. Oh. Not exaggerating. I, Absolutely We, we did great. miss the opportunity to steal David Elder's That's the Bite. Oh, man. Um, well, I guess we'll just have to watch Texas Eats later to make mm, up for it. 10 a.m. Shameless plug. <laughs> hey, you know, it is going to be a beautiful day, Max. I'm so happy the sun is out. It just is going to be a gorgeous weekend, all in all. You know, we were talking about Chamber of Commerce weather for all of those visiting San Antonio for the holidays. It's going to be beautiful. It is a little chilly out there right now. It is 40 degrees in San Antonio. Well, actually now up to 50. Just an indication that the atmosphere is quickly warming, but it's still chilly. 51 in New Braunfels, 51 in Seguin, 46 in Bernie and Kerrville in the Hill Country. And check check out those winds. Winds are from the north at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. They're only going to pick up. It is going to be a bit of a windy day, all because this front has moved through. It's currently pushing across the Mississippi, bringing behind it some gusty conditions. In fact, The pollen count does not look good today, really, because those winds picked up a little mountain cedar. Mountain cedar is moderate. And yesterday we had some rain, so molds are up there too. High past 1,400. So not a great day in the pollen count, but at least the weather is going to be beautiful. 65 today with a few gusts of up to 30 miles per hour possible. So a windy and sunny Saturday. Tomorrow morning we'll be at 38 degrees in the morning. So a chilly start to the day, but a beautiful afternoon near 70 degrees. Speaking of tomorrow morning, there will be some of us, especially up in the hill country, that briefly see freezing. I'll show you which neighborhoods will potentially see a light freeze early tomorrow morning coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. A lot of news to tell you about. And new this morning, some startling news. Two people in the hospital after being shot while just walking downtown overnight. 
Take a look. This is what we know. Police tell us that this happened just before 2.30 this morning. The shooting happened at the intersection of East Commerce and South Alamo. Police say not exactly sure what led up to the shooting. They did receive information about several people being involved. There are people who are detained for questioning. No sus suspects have been identified yet, but two guns were found on the scene. Still under investigation. We are told at least one of those victims of the two who were shot, one of them are expected to be okay. And another shooting to tell you about. One woman in the hospital this morning after a separate shooting on the city's east side. Police say this one happening just before 10 last night. This at the intersection of Burnett and Walter Street. The woman telling police someone in a car pulled up and began shooting at her. Now the victim shot, taken to the hospital. She's expected to recover. Investigation still ongoing, but at last check, no suspect in custody. And a story that we told you about yesterday. We're learning more about the body that was found in Northwest Bear County. So the Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says the body that was found is 51 year old Pete Gonzalez Aguaya. Now the sheriff says he's a resident of San Marcos who was reported missing last month. Now his body discovered this past Saturday. We told you about it first here on KSAT GMSA weekend. And it was found on Escondido Road in the northwest part of Bear County. While there's still a lot of questions about the case, the sheriff did share that the victim's body showed signs that it was dragged to the location. So if you have any information that can help in the case, investigators are asking you for you to call BCSO. That number at the bottom of your screen, 210-335-6000. And BCSO, not the only investigative unit asking for your help. San Antonio Police and Crime Stoppers also asking for your assistance, trying to find the man on your screen. So take a look. Now, investigators say this man is responsible for making a terroristic threat just yesterday and made that threat at St. Matthew's Catholic Church. Police responded to a call just before 2 about the suspect entering the church requesting to meet with the priest. After being told there wasn't one available, the suspect allegedly said he had a car full of explosives. Now, police are still searching for him, so if you have any information, that number, bottom of your screen, this one for Crime Stoppers, 210-224-STOP. Well, we are Military City USA, and we have a story about a local veteran who is warning other tenants living in their apartments that she felt disrespected by her car being towed, and it was towed away right just steps from her front door. Patty Santos spoke to the veteran and shares her story. I'm a 70 year old veteran living on a fixed income during Christmas and they want to charge me $295.26. That's how much Margaret Sanders had to pay to get her vehicle back after bear towing hauled it away from the parking spot in front of her front door. We don't have a sign parking and it's a big complex so you park wherever you can park. At first, she was confused about why her car was towed. After a few phone calls, she thinks it's because she just got a new license plate days before it was towed. The apartment management didn't want to talk about this case, but they say it's explained in the tenant's contract, and they also say it's posted right here in these signs. Signs that say all vehicles must be registered to park. Your understanding is that they just kind of come around and scan license plates? That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. I emailed and called Bear Towing and got a statement back saying the property management and towing company enforce vehicle license plate registration as part of their security efforts, adding, quote, that the presence of disabled veteran license plate does not exempt any vehicle from parking regulations, whether on public or private property. In the spring case, I told you about another disabled veteran who was left stranded in an incident over a handicapped veteran license plate involving the same towing company. So what do you do now? Well, cry over the money that I just had to spend out, the $295, but I mean, people need to care more about people than money. Sanders now warns other apartment tenants and veterans to be on alert. Compassion is lost. Patty Santos, Case at 12 News. In your morning national headlines, former, pre former New York mayor and attorney for the former president, Donald Trump, Rudy Giuliani, well, he has now been ordered to pay $148 million in damages to two former Georgia election workers. So the women sued Giuliani for defamation. This in the aftermath of him spreading lies about them while trying to keep then President Donald Trump in power after the 2020 election loss. Now, both women claim that they suffered harassment, even racist threats as a result of Giuliani's claims. 
Still unclear if Giuliani will be able to pay all the cash because, you know, it is $148 million. Also, you have to consider that one of his former attorneys has sued him over unpaid legal fees. Of course, when you have damages of $148 million, Giuliani, like most people, will be appealing. The Los Angeles County Medical Examiner says Friends star Matthew Perry died from the effects of ketamine. Now, Perry died October 28th after being found unresponsive in the swimming pool of his home. The autopsy results just released yesterday. The report also found the late actor drowned in the heated end of the pool, and that was a secondary factor in his death. Before passing, Perry had been taking ketamine infusion therapy to deal with depression and anxiety. He was only 54 years old. Jeopardy will have only one host next year, and it is not the actress and author Maya Bialik. Instead, it will be former contestant and current co-host Ken Jennings. According to a spokesperson for Sony, the decision was made to have only one host to, quote, maintain continuity for viewers, end quote. Jeopardy says they are grateful and hope to continue working with her on primetime specials. Time now, 9-10, 48 degrees. All right, we have so many amazing family-friendly events going on in and around San Antonio, but as fun as it's going to be, it also means traffic could be a little chaotic. Still ahead, a look at what it's going to look like in the downtown area so that you guys can plan ahead. And after the break, a special introduction to Timothy the Hippo at the San Antonio Zoo. Good morning and welcome back in this morning's Case That Kids segment. We are heading to the San Antonio Zoo, meeting some of our special animal friends. All right, Mia Montgomery and Avery Everett got to meet Timothy the Hippo and, get this, even got to meet his grandma Uma. Check it out. All right, Avery, so you're new to town still. I think it's time for you to meet another San Antonio legend. I mean, I've met a few. I've met the mayor, I've met Manu Ginobili, but you know who I haven't met yet? Timothy the Hippo. Let's, Let's do it. Lovely hippos, Miss Uma and Mr. Timothy. Hi, buddy. He's gonna show you guys his tusk here. Look at that. Yes, you are a big hippo. You are a big, scary hippo. Here you go, buddy. Miss Uma here, she's 48 years old, and Timothy just turned eight as well. One of their favorite snacks is cantaloupe, watermelons, pumpkins, pretty much anything they can smash, they love to eat. They have a very powerful bite force. They have a bite force about 2,000 pounds per square inch in their mouth, so it's very powerful. So Miss Uma weighs about 4,000 pounds, and Timothy is just surpassing Uma, so he is getting bigger than Grandma now. A male hippo can reach upwards to 6,000 pounds. For more information on the San Antonio Zoo, Timmy and Uma, you can head on over to KSAT.com. I'm Avery Everett and Mia Montgomery, KSAT 12 News. Oh, and on the left there, that was Val. That yeah. was great to see her. She got to meet him too. 6,000 pounds is a lot. Uh, is a lot. You asked a great question, why they're wearing masks. Yeah. Hippos are actually susceptible to COVID. <gasps> and oh, so to be wow. especially precautious, they have to wear the masks. Wow, yeah. that so is Yeah, so fun fact, fact of the day. Yeah, gotta love the zoo, it's oh, awesome. Yeah. And it is gonna be a great day to be out and about, perhaps at the zoo. Temperatures are going to be climbing to the mid 60s. Ooh. And sunshine, Max. I love sunshine. This. Yep, and it's all because this front moved through yesterday. That front is currently working its way across the Mississippi. We've got some winds picking up from the north as we speak. So during this morning and into the early afternoon, we will have some windy conditions. So wind gusts of up to 25 to 30 miles per hour through the early afternoon. But then by the evening, especially after sunset, winds are going to calm and it'll be a clear and chilly evening. So we've got drier air working its way in. You step outside, you feel the air. It's nice and dry. Unlike the last few days where we have had clouds, it has been drizzly, damp at times with some light rain. That drier air is filtering in and some cooler air too. Temperatures are still in the 30s in the panhandle. Speaking of the 30s, we are likely going to get down into the 30s tomorrow morning. I'll show you which neighborhoods may briefly reach freezing tomorrow. Uh, but as for our forecast today, by 10, we're going to be at 54. By noon, 61. Sunny and windy through the early afternoon. 65 for the high in San Antonio, right along the average. And then later on tonight, it is going to get chilly quickly. A lot of people going to be heading out to Christmas or holiday parties this weekend. Know that you will want the jacket 
jacket before you head out because by the time by 10 o'clock midnight, it's going to be in the 40s and chilly. So your forecast high today, as I mentioned, right along the average 65 in San Antonio. It'll be near 70 in Pleasanton, near 70 in Creasa Springs, 71 in Gonzales, 68 in Del Rio. Uh, pardon me, 71 in Catula, 66 in Gonzales, 66 in Canyon Lake and 62 in Kerrville and in Fredericksburg. Speaking of Kerrville and Fredericksburg, those are the areas that I think we could have a brief light freeze tomorrow morning. We're talking maybe one, two hours at or just below freezing. In San Antonio, we're going to stay above freezing. 38 is the forecast low tomorrow morning. Staying above freezing in New Braunfels, Pleasanton, Del Rio in the upper 30s. But if you do live up in the hill country, especially in the valleys up in the hill country, I would suggest maybe bringing in those potted plants just an hour or two close to dawn is when temperatures up in the hill country will be near or just below freezing. Otherwise, it's going to be a cold start tomorrow morning in San Antonio, but we will quickly see a high of near 70 tomorrow because of the dry air in place. Next, I want to transition to our rain chances this week. It's going to pretty much be staying dry. Take a look at the western part of the U.S. You can see an upper level ridge of high pressure keeping things dry. This in contrast to the eastern half, which is dealing with some rain. This high pressure system will keep rain out of our forecast for most of the week next week. Here's a look at rain chances. So we've got a few days here if you want to go get the car washed, if you want to get some yard work done. Next couple of days are going to be great for that. By Friday, however, I do think we are going to have some rain and that'll carry into the weekend. Speaking of the weekend, Sunday is Christmas Eve and Monday is Christmas Day next week. I'll have a preview, a sneak preview of the weather for those days coming up. For now, jo though, just know Know that it is going to be a quiet week, chilly mornings in the 40s, cool and pleasant afternoons in the 60s, near 70 degrees by Wednesday, and rain returns on Friday. It is so awesome to see. San I love San Antonio for so many reasons. Yeah. But the fact that it is 65 and sunny in the middle in of the December. I know. It's fantastic. It is fantastic. One of the reasons why people move here, we get through those brutal summers to enjoy this really pleasant winter. That's true. Thank you, Sarah. Time now, just about 919, 49 degrees. All right, holidays just around the corner. So if you still have some holiday shopping to do this weekend, you want to stick to your budget, we have a look at some items that you can buy for a cheaper price. But if you win the lottery, it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so taking a look at the lottery numbers, pick three, nine, eight, two, fireball zero, daily four, four, six, nine, five, fireball three. And your cash five, six, 23, 24, 25, 26. And the big one, mega millions, 10, 20, 28, 40, 54, mega ball, 12, mega plier two. Good luck, everyone. Good morning and welcome back. So we know Christmas just a few days away. So if you're still wrapping up the holiday shopping and you want to stick to a budget, we know inflation's tight. Here's an idea. What about giving refurbished items? So 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains how to shop for the best refurbished goods to put under the tree. Wanting to surprise somebody with a perfect gift, but the price is out of budget? Think refurbished, especially electronics. It can save you a lot of money. We found that you can save between 15 and 20% plus an additional 10% for each year since the product's been released um, versus buying new. So what exactly are you getting when you buy refurbished? It's a used product that's been fixed up to be as good as new. There's a difference between a refurbished product and a used one you may find on Craigslist, eBay, or other online marketplaces. You can find all kinds of things refurbished, tablets, phones, laptops, but of course you want them to be quality. So there are some things to look for. First, look for a certified reseller. An ISO certified reseller will replace defective parts with new ones instead of used ones, or buy refurbished directly from the manufacturer, like Apple or Samsung. Next, look for a warranty that lasts at least 30 days. eBay's certified refurbished products are protected for two years. Apple, Bose, Walmart, and Samsung a full year. Best Buy's warranties are good for 90 days. Some credit card companies will extend the coverage as long as it comes with a pre-existing warranty. Make sure you have at least 30 days for returns because it may take some time to notice any issues. 
Amazon and Walmart offer a refund or replacement for 90 days if your purchase isn't working as expected. Apple limits you to 14 days. Finally, it's a good idea to open up the product as soon as you buy it to be sure it works and has all of the accessories before you wrap it up as a gift. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. The glazed donuts. This is one of the most iconic bites you can get here. And then of course over here you also have the mixed dozens. But I want to try some of the food with you out here because this is an award winning taco spot too. Best tacos in San Antonio, right? All right, so I'm going to go right here. One of the classic bites you can get in San Antonio, Tex-Mex classic, the carne quesada and cheese, flour tortillas right here made from scratch. Right, cheers to you. Cheers. All right, the tacos. I mean, come on, David. Just bring us some tacos. How difficult is this? All right, you can watch Texas Seats today, 10 a.m. But for now, it is 928. It is 50 degrees. Let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. We started off in the 40s. And look at this. It is picture perfect out there. Blue skies, beautiful San Antonio weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 9.30 this morning. It is Saturday, December 16th. Morning. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. So, I always joke with people. I have friends and family in the Northeast and the Midwest. And I look at the weather app, KSAT Weather Authority app. Yeah. And I see it is gorgeous here. It is sunny. It is beautiful. And there, it's How miserable. How cold is it in your hometown right oh. now? Oh. Let me, you know, you do the weather, I'll shout it out to you. All right, sounds good. Hey, let's take a look outside right now. It is a nice and cool, but the key is we have plenty of sunshine. It's 50 degrees in San Antonio right now. It's 48 in Kerrville, 51 in Del Rio, 53 in Catula, and 52 in Gonzales. But we are going to be looking at a beautiful day, 61 by noon and 65 for the high temperature today. Winds will be gusting from the north up to about 30 miles per hour and it's going to get chilly tonight. Temperatures falling into the 40s. So 65 today. Max, how cold is it in your hometown? All right, so I'm originally from Philadelphia. Yeah. So today's not bad. 35 degrees today in Philadelphia, but tomorrow 42 and rainy. It's just gross. Mm, kind of gross. Yeah, you know, speaking of gross, the pollen count's not great today. We've got molds, which are high past 1400. Mountain cedar is moderate at 170. So not the best day for the pollen count, but at least we're going to have sunshine all weekend long, and it's going to be mainly a quiet week. There will, however, be rain chances by Friday. Bit of a change up of the weather pattern ahead of Christmas. Speaking of Christmas, I've got your Christmas Eve and Christmas Day sneak peek forecast. You'll want to stick around for that coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Now to the latest. We continue to learn more about the case of these three San Antonio police officers charged in the shooting death of a local woman. We're also finding that the Bear County District Attorney's Office, well, they may have a difficult time convicting these officers. So two of the three officers, they're facing murder charges for the shooting death of Melissa Perez. The third officer, facing charges of aggravated assault. Remember, this is a story we've been following very closely. Last June, Perez was shot in her home while having what they describe as a mental health crisis. We spoke with a prosecutor and a defense attorney. Both agree it is very rare for a jury to convict police officers. Well, it's extremely difficult simply because I think most people, uh, rightly so, want to have confidence in their local law enforcement to protect them. I mean, and, and, and I agree with that. You have to take into consideration the fact that these are peace officers who are out in the streets attempting to, to protect people and, and to uh, make sure that, that folks are safe. So the three indicted officers are expected to be arraigned next month. And speaking of the police, they have new information for us this morning after one man was shot in critical condition after being shot in the stomach just west of downtown. San Antonio police telling us the shooting happened last night just before 8 p.m. This all unfolding on West Commerce Street near Old Highway 90. We're told two men, two people got into an argument that ended with gunfire. The victim taken to the hospital. So far, no arrests, no suspect in custody. In fact, police are still searching for who is responsible. On a 1 to 10, rate of 1 is sober, and 10 is a drunk server. What number do you feel like you're at right now? Um, yeah. Maybe a 5. A 5? Okay. For less than that. That is not the answer police wanted to hear. That is star UTSA wide receiver Joshua Cephas. He was being questioned by police after a rollover crash in the vehicle 
last December. Now, the Bear County District Attorney's Office releasing footage of his arrest and releasing his blood alcohol analysis paperwork. All of this after Cephas pleaded no contest to a DWI. That paperwork showing that he had a blood alcohol level of 0.183. That's more than twice the legal limit to drive a vehicle. All of this in the aftermath of the early morning crash near the UTSA campus. The senior did avoid jail time in the case for exchange of serving 15 months probation. Cephas finishes his college football career December 19th when UTSA plays Marshall in the Frisco Bowl. Well, investigators asking for your help trying to find a suspect involved in an aggravated robbery that happened November 25th. It happened around 3 in the morning at Bowman Ridge near Houseman Road. Police tell us a man was shot after confronting the suspect after they were trying to break into the man's vehicle. So take a look at the screen one more time. If you have any information about the crime, any info that can help police apprehend the suspect, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 210-224-STOP. Holidays right around the corner. There is so many family friendly events happening around downtown this weekend. But as fun as it's going to be, it might not be that fun for drivers. It could be a traffic situation. That's why RJ Marquez is breaking down what you need to know not only about traffic, but also breaking down parking. All right, it is going to be a jam-packed weekend across the downtown area here. So we're going to let you know some information on some events taking place. First thing, holidays on Houston. That's going to be taking place around Legacy Park. And, of course, Houston, a lot of activations in that area. USAA and Valera are both holding their corporate parties this weekend there in the downtown area. Magical Cirque is also going to be taking place here and the Nutcracker at the Lila Cockrell Theater. Magical Cirque Christmas, that one's going to be at the Majestic. So the city is advising right now that... Uh, of you use two parking garages. Now there's going to be a lot of parking garages, obviously city owned, but these are the best two when it comes to availability. The St. Mary's garage there on East Travis Street and also the city tower garage that's going to be on West Commerce Street. So all of these are walking distance to the Riverwalk if you're not going to be there for any of these holiday events. And uh, we also have walking distance to the Majestic Theater, a lot of different parts of the city that you can get access to from these two parking garages. Let's take a look at some drone video that we shot the other other day and to kind of give you a nice uh, look here at some of these uh, parking garages that we're talking about the St. Mary's garage again this is going to be the closest location to the majestic uh, and also Travis Park so if you're going to go check out the tree this is an option for you right there so we have uh, of course a lot of uh, availability in that parking garage there and then we're going to show you another one here this of course is the convention center garage now this is going to be very busy again Valero they're going to have their event at the Grand Hyatt USAA at the convention Center. There's also the Pokemon Regional Championships at the Convention Center that day as well. The Lila Cockrell Theater is in this area and uh, they of course are showing the Nutcracker in the evening. So the South Alamo lot may be a good option there if you are headed out to this part of downtown San Antonio near the Convention Center and the Alamo Dome. So visitors of course are being asked to consider using public transportation, ride share, also maybe if you're parking just kind of expect to maybe get a little bit of walking there as we give you back outside here one more quick look at our map and you can see again we have these two parking garages that are going to have the most availability there's going to be a lot of things going on throughout downtown san antonio on saturday we have a full map of all these city-owned garages on ksat.com make sure to check that out if you're headed downtown and be safe everyone this weekend Thank you, RJ. All right, speaking of traffic and events happening in downtown and in San Antonio, we we're checking in at the wrap event. Hundreds of toys being donated and passed out. These toys currently being wrapped by volunteers and the San Antonio Fire Department. An amazing event that happens every year, helping families in and around our community. And before we head to break, as 2023 is starting to come to an end, we're going to give a look back at the year here at KSAT 12 from the amazing stories, the breaking news, and so much more. Here is our 2023 year end wrap. Good morning. Hope you had a wonderful weekend. We start with a traffic alert this noon. We want to get you right to a breaking story just into our newsroom. Thank you for joining us tonight. We're going to start with our weather. Back to work, back to school in the morning, and you want the umbrella. The San Antonio Spurs select Victor Wembanyama. We are approaching complete annularity here. You know I don't want to talk to you. To the 2023 Battle of Flowers Parade. It is the second annual KSAT Pigskin Classic. The 11th annual Dia de los Muertos right here at Hemisphere. As we
morning and welcome back. If you're looking for a new Christmas lights experience this year, well, you got to check out Lights Alive in Alamo Ranch. Digital journalist Andrew Wilson showing us how the project started after a local family programmed a home light show that grew into a massive undertaking that you can experience. Lights Alive is a 1.3 mile drive through light show. Everything is computer controlled, synchronized to the music. I used to go all out for Christmas in our house and I used to end up having to do the lights outside. One year I said, nope, honey, you're gonna have to get outside, put up all the Christmas lights. And to my surprise, it was this amazing epic light show that he created. The casting directors for The Great Christmas Light Bite on ABC saw it and invited us to be on the show. And that's how this all started. All of the lights are actually pixels. So I have a pixel here and every single one has a computer chip in it. So every single light that you see in the show, we've had to map it on our computer exactly where, if you're looking at a Santa, each one of those individual pixels are and in order to have the computer control all the lights and be synchronized. This has been five years in the making. So every year we add more and more, we update new sections. This year we have a whole new soundtrack and we work on it all year long. And then at the end, we have a winter wonderland park and play where people can get out and enjoy the sights and sounds of Christmas. So we actually have a 50 foot tree and we created our own app and you can make your own light show on the app and then send it up to the tree and watch it. Santa is up there every night doing photos. We have two escape rooms so you can challenge your family and friends. There's so many fun things to do up there. That is amazing. That is amazing. You know, I believe it or not, I still have a few Christmas lights that I'd like to get hung up in our front yard. So we'll see if we get that done this weekend. But guess what? The weather is going to be great for that. Nice. So that's a hint to my husband who's hopefully watching. <laughs> Michael. Rest of the Christmas lights, please. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay. Sunshine this weekend for us. We are going to be warming up quickly. It's around 50 degrees right now, but by 11, it's going to be 58. We're also going to see the winds pick up here in San Antonio in the mid morning into the early afternoon. 61 at noon, sunny skies this afternoon. And we'll be at uh, 65. So again, winds are going to be sustained from the north at about 10 to 20 gusts up to 25 possible today. Later on tonight, temperatures are quickly going to cool by nine o'clock. We'll be in the 40s. So if you have one of those holiday office parties this weekend or neighborhood parties, just know that you're going to want the jacket before you head outside uh, this evening. It's going to get chilly quickly. 65 for the high in San Antonio, 68 in Del Rio, 64 Rock Springs, low 60s in the Hill Country, low 70s down near Catula and Laredo. Our average high is this time of year is 65, so we're right on average. 64 in Bernie, it'll be 64 in Bulverde, 68 in Hondo, 68 in Floresville, 66 in Seguin, and 63 in Comfort. It is very dry out there right now. Dew points are in the 40s, and they're going to be falling during the afternoon today. Dew points will be in the 30s. Very dry air cools down quickly, so I mentioned this evening it's going to get chilly. By tomorrow morning, we will be in the 30s. Now, around San Antonio, upper 30s for the morning low. So you won't need to worry about a light freeze. It will not be freezing in New Braunfels. It won't be freezing in Canyon Lake. It won't be freezing in Divine or Floresville or Pleasanton. But in some pockets of the hill country, temperatures could briefly reach freezing. We're talking areas like Bandera, Kerrville, Comfort, maybe even Rio Medina, a dip to just below freezing for maybe an hour or so. So if you live up in the higher elevations, if you live in a valley of the hill country, it might be better to just bring in those potted plants just in case. I don't think you're going to have to worry about any of the other vegetation out there. Just those potted plants that are sensitive in the hill country, perhaps bring those in. In San Antonio, again, no freeze. You're not going to have to worry about it whatsoever. And in fact, this week it will be mainly quiet. Rain chances really don't return to San Antonio until potentially Friday. So a quiet week to get some yard work done, uh, to enjoy some time outdoors. But by Friday, we'll see our rain chances increase. And this is a look at our next rain chance. This is Thursday. There will be a low pressure system 
really spinning off in the Pacific, and that's going to send bursts of energy our way so that by Friday, I do think we'll have areas of rain from Dallas to San Antonio through central Texas and down to Houston. Saturday, a chance for some light rain as well. And then Sunday, as that low moves north on Christmas Eve, we could have some areas of light rain. So as we look at to our uh, Christmas sneak peek, small chance for rain on Christmas Eve on Sunday. Temperatures Christmas Eve and Christmas Day are likely going to be in the 60s. So not too cold, not too hot, kind of just right, right in the middle. Goldilocks weather for Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. The only thing here that could change is we could bump up those temperatures slightly as we get closer to the holidays or we might introduce a rain chance, a small rain chance on Christmas Day, but those things are yet to be seen. This is the Christmas sneak peek for you. What we can tell you now is that it's going to be fairly mild on Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. As for temperatures this week, chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons, plenty of sunshine until clouds and rain return Thursday and Friday of the week ahead. Oh, look at that, 65 and sunny. Pretty nice. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Time now 950, 51 degrees. Well, the Federal Reserve made more moves this week, and it has huge implications on interest rates, inflation, the housing market. So that is why tomorrow we are going to be joined by a specialist from Victory Capital to break down what exactly happened, what it means, and how it impacts you community members here in San Antonio. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you can submit them right now. Just head to the leading essay section of ksat.com. Then join us tomorrow morning, 8 a.m. for the full interview. Time now, just about 9.54, 51 degrees. We got a lot more to talk about when we come back. Like the weather, look at that. It is gorgeous out there, 51 degrees. Not a cloud in the sky from this angle. The beautiful San Antonio skyline. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Good morning and welcome back. So we've been talking about the fire department giving back to the community, but we also want to tell you about a local ministry giving back to our community in a huge way this weekend. Gospel Vision Ministries hosting their annual toy giveaway this morning at the Barbara Jordan Community Center. This is the 20th year of the giveaway. More than a thousand local kids getting toys for Christmas. Earlier this month, we caught up with Reverend James Robinson talking about the event and, of course, teaming up with San Antonio and, of course, Kansas City football legend Priest Holmes to spread some holiday joy. We just had an event there for Thanksgiving, and the line was about three miles long. So we uh, uh, want y'all to get there early to come out and have a good time. I was a little tight at that time, trying to get on this bike probably. Uh, and I was there at church, and uh, he was a little bit older than I was at that particular time, but he was also still someone giving back. All right, the giveaway runs until noon. The community center located 2800 block of East Commerce Street. Also happening today and tomorrow, a chance to open up your home to a pet in need. Petco and San Antonio Pets Alive hosting an adoption event, waiving all adoption fees for all pets. Uh, those adoption locations on your screen right now. If you're like me and you have to squint to see the screen, don't worry. We have all this information. Just head to caseot.com. Okay. So that's five. You ready? We've had brisket tacos today, so we set the bar pretty high. Taco Bell introducing frozen coffee and sweet shakes, so I guess like milkshake. Yeah. Now uh, the drinks are inspired by authentic Mexican flavors, Mexican chocolate, dulce de leche, churros, spiced vanilla. They cost about $4 each. It's actually, I don't know. I don't even know how to gauge things anymore. Coffee is way <laughs> too expensive. For now, they're only available at two locations in well. Southern California. So maybe if they are successful in those locations, they can come on over to San Antonio. Yeah, maybe. We'll see how many people go there, though. Yeah, that's fair. Okay. <laughs> All right. Outside right now, we have got uh, temperatures in the 50s, 54 degrees in San Antonio. Totally sunny. Winds from the north at about 10 miles per hour. Those winds are going to pick up here the next couple of hours, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Yeah, it's not a pretty pollen count. Molds are high and mountain cedar is up from yesterday. It's moderate, but with those north winds today, it'll be interesting to see if mountain cedar goes up even more. Now today, 65 for the high. A beautiful day, but a little breezy. Tomorrow, it's going to be cold in the morning, six, uh, 38 degrees rather, but 69 for the afternoon high. So quick warm up, and that'll be the trend this week. Chilly mornings, comfortable afternoons. It isn't until Friday that we see, start to see a chance of rain return to the forecast. And right now on the KSAT Weather Authority, 
app, we've got your extended 10 day forecast, which goes into Christmas as well. Looks like it's going to be in the 60s on Christmas Day. That is fantastic. And you know the story we did about people going to put wreaths down? Yeah. Someone just sent me a video. They are packed. So thank you to all That's the great. volunteers.